Hey, Nicolas Ferrier here. I'm a technical marketing engineer working for Cisco Service Provider Business Unit. We recently announced a new generation of NCS 5500 LAN cards based on Jericho 2 ASICs. They are here to address a growing need of 400 gig Ethernet interfaces. What are these two new LAN cards? What is required before inserting them? How will they be able to interoperate with older generation? And also how these new 400 gig interfaces will be able to connect to existing 100 gig? We will answer just after the intro. The new line cards require specific software and hardware to be used in the NCS 5500. Software first. You will need a minimum iOS XR version, then hardware. You will need a new generation of fabric cards and a new generation of fan trays too. Today, in July 2019, and with the existing iOS XR 6.6.25, we already ship and support this new fabric and new fans for the 8 slot and the 16 slot chassis. The 4 slot chassis options are planned for 2020. We need new fans because the 400 gigabit interface will be particularly challenging in terms of cooling. And we need fabric cards powered by a new generation of fabric engine named Ramon. You may have heard about FE7200 or FE9600 in the past, they are the same chipsets. It will offer connectivity to Jericho 2 with 53 gig CDIS, and it will be backward compatible with Jericho and Jericho Plus ASIX using CDIS at 25 gig. Since Ramon has more links compared to the former generation FE3600, we need less number of chipsets per fabric card, particularly for the 16 slot chassis. You don't need to change the chassis itself, and you don't need to replace the system controllers or the route processors. Regarding the number of power modules needed, please check the CPC to identify the requirements based on your config. One last recommendation. You need to replace both fan trays and fabric cards at the same time. We don't support a mix of first and second generations in the same chassis. So, we have the right software version, the new fabric cards and the new fan trays. We are now ready for 400 gigabit Ethernet interfaces. Before presenting the new line cards, let's step back a bit and introduce the 400 gig technology. Cisco's strategy for the 400 gig Ethernet turns around the QSFP DD form factor. If you have 90 minutes and you want to go deep in the details of the technology, I suggest you start with the Cisco Live sessions linked here or here. QSF PDD has multiple advantages, the first being the backward compatibility with all former QSFP form factors. And we have a huge install base for QSFP Plus at 40 gig and QSFP 28 for 100 gig. The DD in the name means double density. We can see on this picture that we have longer electrical connector between the optic and the router. The specification doc calls it a paddle card. It's made of two rows of 38 pads on the top and 38 other pads on the bottom. Basically, we are doubling the number of connectors with this longer paddle card. In a QSFP DD capable cage, you can insert QSFP Plus and QSFP 28 with just one row of connectors. We also double the internal speed with a new encoding scheme. Indeed, we moved from NRZ, non-return to zero, to a PAM4 encoding scheme with now four different states to encode 00, 01, 10, and 11. Double the number of connectors, double the internal lane speed. We are now able to offer 400 gigabit Ethernet with the same form factor. If you want to break out a 400 gig port into four ports of 100 gig, it will not be possible to connect it to your existing SR4 or LR4 100 gig optics, simply because the broken out ports are transporting one single lane of 100 gig with data encoded in PAM4, while the ports you want to connect to are transporting four lines of 25 gig encoded in NRZ. It cannot work together. But we are seeing the emergence of a new 100 gig optics technology based on a single lambda and PAM4. We will be able to connect them to the 4x100 DR4 breakout. For your reference, due to the QSFP 56DD optics types, we are planning to support at FCS. We will also have 200 gig options and they will be very important for a smooth transition from the 100 gig world. These QSFP 28DD are using NRZ encoding scheme and with them breaking out in 2x100 will allow the backward compatibility with existing SR4 
CWDM4 and LR4 optics. We are proposing the new line cards in two flavors. One will be a 24 ports 400 gig without external TCAM, and the second will be a mix of 100, 200, and 400 gig capable ports with external TCAM. First card, the 24DD, is powered by two Jericho 2SX for a total of 9.6 terabit per second. That extends the forwarding capability of a 16 slot chassis to 153 terabit per second, and that in just half of a rack. Pretty impressive, right? The second card has been designed to help with the progressive transition from a 100 gig to a 400 gig world. Here also, the card is made of a pair of Jericho 2 chipsets with external TCAM that time. That's why they are underling 3.6 terabit per second of traffic each instead of 4.8, total 7.2 tera. On the front plate, ports are grouped in pairs, 0 and 1, 2 and 3, etc. With the exceptions of the port labeled in blue. Let me explain the logic here. Each pair of ports is providing a total bandwidth of 400 gig. That means we can have one 400 gig port and keep the other port empty, or we can have two ports at 200 gig or two ports at 100 gig. Take a look at the blog post link in the description to understand how it works in the details. With this approach, we can use breakout of 2x100 and connect to the existing 100 gig SR4 or LR4 present in your network. And step by step, we can migrate to 400 gig, replacing the optics. The ports in blue are individually capable of 400 gig which doesn't prevent you from inserting a 2x100 or QSFP2800 if you want to do so. Now a few words about the features. At the moment of the product introduction, we plan to align the support of the features and the scale on the Jericho Plus line cards with iOS XR 6.5.1 for the core and peering role. It will allow users to mix Jericho, Jericho Plus and Jericho 2 line cards in the same chassis. We call this the compatibility mode. In the future, we will introduce a J2 native mode for chassis populated exclusively with Jericho 2 line cards. In the next video, I will show you a large test bed that we built a few months ago to demonstrate line rate traffic on a 24 by 400 gigi line cards, all wired in what we call a snack topology. The slot is effectively forwarding 9.6 terabit per second. We'll publish a lot of new content in the next coming month, so don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. Also, please give us your feedback in the comments section. We'll be happy to provide more details and clarification. See you soon!